I would like to welcome all <coughs> listeners back again to the um, third section of the third installment of the analysis of the uh, wor- <coughs> uh, excuse me the world famous book uh, Ulysses by the world famous writer J- James Joyce um, <coughs> analysis by by John Ruan uh, Ruan uh, that's spelt R-U-A-N-E, that is me. Um, just briefly a little bit about myself again. Um, I'm from <coughs> the village of Munave, which is in the county of Galway, which is in the west of Ireland. Um, I'm also a playwright. I've written um, 9, 10, 11. I've written 11 one-act plays and two full-length plays, which is in total... Um, Four complete nights of theatre, uh, running time for each night would be one hour, 50 minutes, two, uh, actually two hours, um, uh, 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 four complete nights of theatre, which overall cast for all four plays will be over 80. Um, one of my plays, a uh, play called Desperations, was staged out in New York in a small theatre called Theatre for the New City in the year 2000. Uh, um, to you know, excellent reviews from the Village Vice uh, newspaper out there, which is a very high-profile um, arts paper, uh, uh, not alone in New York but worldwide, really. You know, um, also the Irish Vice newspaper out there and the Irish Echo newspaper give that play excellent reviews. So with an overall cast of eleven and an excellent, uh, um, an excellent cast, really. You know, ex- excellently directed. By John Keating and stage managed by um, Francis Smith. Um, as I said before in these recordings, that's, that was the year 2000. It's now 16 years later. I'm actually still trying to get that play staged here in Ireland, and I haven't had any luck yet. As I'm also uh, still trying to get my other um, 11 one act plays and another full length play uh, staged in Ireland, and I haven't had any luck yet. I'm not really sure here in Ireland do we have an actual agent that deals with plays. I don't know. I know there's only two agents that deal with books in the whole country. Um, and one of them, uh, uh, most of the time, is not even accepting submissions. I think we've just... Uh, that's uh, the writing world in Ireland uh, as it stands at the moment. Um, uh, so I just have to, you know, make an, uh, you know, uh, most uh, most writers have uh, PR firms, you know, public relation firms, um, you know, hire to uh, promote them. Um, I'm basically my own uh, PR person. Um, so I'm, you know, I'm I'm looking for uh, theaters. You know, I'm not looking for like big theaters like you know, the Gate or the Abbey. I'm looking for small, small parish theaters. If you want to. Um, if you want to but 24 of your members you know to work uh, you know s- acting in pl- in in three one act plays um they're you know i've them already here um to go i'd like to start off with these three one act plays as i said an overall cast of 24 which should be it's i think it's 12 actors and 12 actresses i know uh, actors and actresses are always looking for parts um I have, you know, 24 parts here, ready and waiting to be staged, and these are these are certainly uh, highly stageable plays, um, and and I think they're very uh, extremely entertaining. So uh, uh, any actors or actresses, you know, actor stage actors and actresses out there, you know, send me a, send me an email, and by all means, I I will get them three one act plays out here and. You know, as the the Edgar Allan Poe poem, um, it says, "What does it say? Take the road less travelled by." That's I'm looking for a theatre to take uh, the road less travelled by, and I guarantee they will not be disappointed. So you know, come on, um, stage actors and stage actresses out there, you know, there's nothing to be nothing to be afraid of. You know, send me an email and get these plays staged and let's see if the flop the flop but you know let's 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 l- l- at least have a look at them anyways and also i'd like to give a plug t- to my book of short stories 
Nine Stories from Evanon, which is available for, uh, for sale at Amazon. And there should be a link from this website to it. And not alone is that book, is it a book of nine short stories? As I said, it's called Nine Stories from Evanon. A-E-V-I-N-O-M is, the, is the, how you spell that. It's also nine one-act plays contained within the nine uh, short stories. So I'm not sure is it a first of its kind, uh, where all nine short stories are actually nine, also nine one-act plays. But um, I don't think it's been done many times in writing where all nine short stories were actually um, flipped over uh, exactly the dialogue in the book as uh, as nine one-act plays as well. Um, so if you know anybody wants to purchase that book I really appreciate it and contained within that book are you know are the plays uh, word for word the dialogue is there you know um, and thank uh, all listeners for that uh, so back to James Joyce's book we're at um, page 58 as I've marked here on my book and as I said before it would we're going to get through uh, six pages in a bit probably here at this sitting and if people could mark um, mark the page uh, you know 58 59 up to six pages would be on the same kind of wavelength uh, as such so anyways we were at we finished up as um, has the fidgets electric thunder in the air was washing at our ear we're back to the fire too um, if that area really he felt heavy full then the yeah that's the yeah, that we finished right there he felt heavy full then a gentle loosening of his bowels he stood up undoing the waistband of his trousers the cat meowed to him meow he said in answer wait till i'm ready heaviness hot day coming too much trouble uh, heaviness, hot day coming, too much trouble to fag up the stairs to the landing. A paper he liked to read at stool. Hope no, he, hope no ape comes knocking just as I am. Yes, I think that's exactly where we finished. Um, I think, yeah. Um, okay, I think I covered most of them lines there. Heaviness, hot day coming. So he's full up, you know, basically. And he needs to go, you know, to the bathroom. <laughs> and, this, and it looks like Jice is going to take us to the bathroom with him. Um, heaviness, hot day coming, too much trouble to fag up to the stairs to the landing. So there's obviously a toilet or upstairs, and he doesn't feel like going up there. Uh, next line, a paper. He liked to read a stool. He liked to read a paper while he was doing his business. And then hope no ape comes knocking just as I'm. Hope no ape. Ape. That's kind of. That's a real Irish. That would be an Irish expression here. Hope no ape. That means that well, that really means it. I hope nobody comes knocking just as I'm, you know, sitting on the toilet. Basically, that's what that means. Next line. In the table drawer, he found a known number of titbits. <laughs> he folded it under his armpit, went to the door, and opened it. The cash went up in soft bounds. A wanted to go upstairs, curl up in a ball on the bed. Listening, he heard her voice. Come, come, pussy, come. So I'm just going over that again. Um, in the table drawer, he found an old number of titbits. Now, why is Jace called it titbits above any, of all names? <laughs> so, you know, this is Jace again. You know, Jace is just uh, an unbelievable, mischievous writer also. So, you know, you can visualize Jace, Jace there, you know, laughing to himself. He calls it, you know, titbits. Um, um, it's probably it's just a magazine or some kind of a newspaper or something. That's all that is, I would say. He folded it under his armpit, you know, um, went to the door and opened it. The cat went in, so went to the door and opened it. I'm not sure how he opened the outside door yet. I'm not sure, but he went to the door. The cat went up in soft bounds. I wanted to go upstairs. Yes, this could be a door that leads upstairs where Molly Bloom is sleeping. And he opened this door and the cat, you know, went. The cat went through it. I wanted to go upstairs, curl up in a ball on the bed. Uh, which the cat has gone upstairs to Molly Bloom to, you know, curl up in the bed. Listening, he heard her voice, which is Molly Bloom, Molly Bloom 
advice. Come, come, pussy, come. So she sees the cat is going into a room and she says, come, come, pussy, come. Uh, next line. He went out through the back door into the garden, stood to listen towards the next garden. No sound, perhaps hanging clothes out to dry. The maid was in the garden, fine morning. He bent down to regard a lean file of, spear of spearmint growing by the wall. Make a summer house here, scarlet runners, Virginia creepers. Want to manure the whole place over, scabby soil. A coal of liver, a coal of liver of sulphur. All soil, all soil like that without dung, household slops, loom. What is this that is? The hens in the next garden, they're dropping their very good top dressing. Best of all though are the cattle, especially when they are fed on those eye cakes. <laughs> Mulch of dung, best thing to clean ladies' kid gloves, dirty cleans, ashes too. Um, reclaim the whole place, grow peas in that corner there, lettuce, always have fresh greens then. Still gardens have their drawbacks. That be our blue bottle here, which Monday. So reading over the, all that again, it's um, he went out through the back door into the garden. So he went out the back door into his garden, stood to listen. Um, you know, listeners will have to start visualizing all this now. You know, he went out through. So visualize in your mind. He went out through the back door into the garden, stood to listen towards the next garden. So he listened to see. He's listening to see can he hear any sound from the next door garden. No sound. Perhaps hanging clothes on the dry, which is the neighbour next door, possibly the woman next door. Perhaps she's hanging clothes on out to dry. This is what he's thinking. The maid was in the garden, fine morden. He just taught this line, uh, the maid was in the garden from a nursery rhyme, I would say, or something. Fine morning. And then he's looking at the sky. Probably fine morning. Now, he bent down to regard a lean file of spearmint growing by the wall. So there's, you know, spearmint growing here by the wall. And he's leaning down to look at it. Um, make make a summer house here. Then he's thinking, well, i make a summer house here, which is like a glass house. And then he's thinking, scarlet runners. Yes, I grow scarlet runners. Uh, Virginia creepers. And then he thinks, want to manure the whole place over manure it you know give it fertilizer this is what he's thinking um scabby soil and he's thinking he starts thinking yes this is scared and they got scabby soil and he's thinking i'll put a coat of liver of sulfur which is like some kind of manure i would say that would make things grow better basically all and then he thinks all soil like that without dung dung is another word for basically fertilizer all soil like that without dung you know this sulfur and then he's thinking household slops you know household slops is good manure can be good manure too good fertilizer loam um i don't know what loam is but it's something along that light them lines what is this that is uh, what is this that is actually jace might know what it is either he says household slops loam what is this that is uh next line the hens in the next garden their droppings are very good top dressing uh, you know the hens, the hens next in the next door garden, and their droppings are good fertilizer. Um, best of, and then he thinks best of all though are the cattle. Cattle's droppings are, are is great fertilizer, especially when they're fed on those eye cakes. <laughs> so Jace has said that their fertilizer is very good if they're fed on eye cakes. Mulch of dung. Um, it's you know. And then he thinks, mulch of dung, best thing to clean ladies, kid gloves, and, and that's, I think, was what that means, and kids' gloves. So, this fertilizer from cattle, um, which is their droppings, basically, it must be good for cleaning ladies' gloves, ladies' and kids' gloves. You know, it's, it's possible, it is, I never knew that before, but this is what he's thinking. Mulch of dung, best thing to clean ladies and kids' gloves. So if you maybe if you sleep them overnight in it, it could clean them or something. I don't know. And then he because and this is the reason I know this is what uh, uh, this could be right because next line is dirty cleans. So that's dirty and it cleans. Dirty cleans. And then he ashes too. He's thinking ashes. Yeah, ashes. 
is is good fertilizer for land you know for the garden and then he thinks reclaim the whole place i should really reclaim this whole garden reclaim it reclaim it meaning you know dig it up and so on still gardens have their drawbacks now he's thinking still gardens have their drawbacks that be our blue bottle here with monday so with monday um i know this myself actually uh with monday uh, uh on with monday you know a bee or a blue bottle comes on with monday maybe not on with monday but around that time it's some kind of a, a an insect that does damage to uh, you know cabbage or whatever or some kind of vegetables and he, and he thinks that bee or blue bottle here it comes around it comes you know at that time of year basically um so he's just thinking all these things now um next line he walked on where is my hat by the way must have put it back on the peg or hanging up on the floor funny i don't remember that hall stand too full four umbrellas her raincoat picking up the letters drago shop bell ringing queer i was just thinking that moment brown brilliant brilliant tinted hair over his collar just had a wash and brush up wonder have our time for a bath this morning Terra Street, chap in the pay box there got away, got away, James Stevens, they say, O'Brien. Deep Five, that fella Lou Gatsis ha- has a gint of what is it? Now my miss, an enthusiast. Uh, going over back over that again. And he walked on, so he's walking out the garden, he's, he's, uh, wha- and then he thinks, where is my hat? So he, he hasn't got his hat with him, and he's thinking, where is my hat, by the way? Must have put it back on the peg. So he's thinking, I must have put the hat back on the peg. Or hanging up on the floor. Um, that could... Or hanging... Or hang, is it hanging up on the floor? Which doesn't... Um, <laughs> or hanging up on the floor. Maybe it just fell on the... F- yes, maybe it just fell on the floor. And he's thinking... Or, and he's just being humorous here saying... Or is it hanging up on the floor? Meaning it, mean it has fell on the floor. Funny, I don't, rem- I don't remember that. Um, I'm not f- sh- fully sure about that line, but it's something along them lines, I think. Then he thinks, hall stand, too full. Four umbrellas. There's four umbrellas on it. Her raincoat. Picking up the letters. So, picking up the letters. When he picked up the letters after getting the kidney earlier on. Drago's shop bell ringing. He heard Drago's shop bell ringing. So, Drago's could be a shop close by. and he, Yeah, it is. Drago's shop bell ringing. Queer, I was just thinking that moment. Queer, I was just thinking that moment. Um, do do. So, brown, brilliant tinted hair over his collar. Um, brown, brilliant tinted hair over his collar. Um, he could be thinking here about um, going for a haircut or something. And Drago's shop bell ringing could be uh, like a barber's or you know where you get your hair cut or something. Uh, and he could just be thinking that right there now, picking up the letters. Drago's shop bell ringing. Queer. I was just thinking. I was just thinking that one. Maybe I was thinking about going for a haircut. Maybe brown, brilliant hair over his collar. Not sure about that. Uh, I have to think about that. And then he says, just had a wash and brush up, um, or maybe a shave, possibly. He's maybe seen him going for a shave or something. Picking up the letters, Drago's shop bell ringing. Uh, Queer was just thinking that moment. Brown, brilliant tinted hair over his collar. Just had a wash and brush up. So he just had a wash and brush up recently. Wonder have a time for a bath this morning. Tara Street. Chap in the pay box there got away. James Stevens, they say, by the way. So now he's thinking, have I time to go and have a bath this morning in... You know, a place called Terra Street, which is probably the public bats, I would say. He's just thinking all that. Chap in the pay box there got away. So, that could be possibly somebody stole the pay box there. Chap in the pay box there got away. GM Stevens, they say. That could be the person's name that stole the pay box. I'm not sure about that, but something along them line. O'Brien. I'd have to give that more thought. But... I think that could be the gist of what's going on there. Next line. D5, that fella uh, Lugax has. Now, that's the butcher. Remember the butcher? 
D5. Now he's thinking. D he's got a D5. He's, this is all the thoughts in his mind at the moment. D5 that fella Louis Gatz has. Now he's thinking, you know, to his counter with this, uh, with the butcher in the butcher's shop. And he's thinking he's got a D5. A Jinta, what is it? So I think that lady in the butcher, she says something about, she asked, did she all say something about a Jinta? A Jinta. A Jinta, what is it? A Jinta. Um, a Jinta. Is it some kind of a spice or something? I'd have to look that up. And she could have asked for that. And he's thinking. Yeah, he's thinking about what she asked for. Something on the lines. Now, my miss. Yes, he's thinking about the woman that was in there. I told these. Um, next line. He kicked, he kicked open the crazy door of the Jake's. Better be careful not to get these trousers dirty for the funeral. He went in, bowing his head under the low lintel, leaving the door ajar amid the stench of mouldy lime wash and stale cobwebs. He undid his braces. Before sitting down, he peered through a chink up at the neighbor, up at the next door window. The king was in was in his counting house. Nobody. A squat on the cook stool, he folded out his paper, turning his pages over on his bare knees. Something new and easy. No great hurry. Keep it up a bit. Our prize titbit, Matcham's Masterstroke, written by Mr. Philip Biofi, Playgoers Club, London. Payment at the rate of one guinea a column has been made to the writer. Three and a half. Three pounds, three, three pounds, thirteen and six. So, starting that again, he kicked open the crazy door of the Jakes. Uh, the Jakes, um, now, here in Ireland, the call another name for co for you know for the another name for for the bathroom or a toilet is they would say jacks j or in england too i think this to use the word jacks as well so the jakes is just another kind of a offshoot from the word jacks he kicked open the crazy door of the jakes uh, the jacks basically which is the you know the bathroom this is an outdoor bathroom obviously so he kicked open the door. It's probably got a wooden door. It's kind of, you know, hanging off. He kicked it open. Better be careful not to get these trousers dirty for the funeral. This is what he's thinking now. He went in, bowing his head. He went in, bowing his head under the low lintel. He's got a low door, low, uh, low, low door. Leaving the door ajar. He, le he, he left the door ajar. I wonder why he left the door ajar. <laughs> Amid the stench of mouldy lime wash and stale cobwebs, he undid his braces. Uh, so mouldy lime wash is probably thrown in with all this stuff to you know get rid of it and so on and keep the you know stench down I would say and steel cobwebs uh, steel cobwebs around the walls I would say before sitting down before sitting down he peered through a chink up at the next door window so there's a little chink a little opening here and he just peers through it up at the next door window just look at next door um, the exactness of Joyce's writing here again, you know. The king was in the counting house, nobody. So he's thinking about basically, I'd say, just a line from a nursery rhyme or something. The king was in the counting house, and then he said, No, yeah, nobody, there's nobody around. A squat on the cook stool, so he's sitting. <laughs> this is going to be great. This is, I'd say, will be graphic from Joyce, you know. Um, remember, he had a free reign now reading Ulysses, or writing Ulysses, and. He wasn't shackled by censorship, so here goes, we'll keep reading anyway. A squat on the cook stool, he folded out his paper, turning his pages over on his bared knees. So he's going to read in the newspaper as he's sitting down do doing his business. Something new and easy. No great hurry. Um, I'd say now he's thinking here about the newspaper he's reading. Uh, something new and easy. Uh, no great hurry. Now, when he's, what he's saying, he, what, when he, when he, he's thinking here, no great hurry. There's no great hurry. You know, I'll take my time doing what he's doing. Um, Keep it up a bit. <laughs> you got to just visualize, well, you don't have to visualize this, but there's no great hurry. Keep it up a bit. Our prize titbit, Matcham's masterstroke. So he's looking here, I would say, at some kind of an advertisement. And I think we've already learned that he sells, he somehow, I think, sells advertisements for newspapers. And he's, and in this newspaper, I think he's reading like an advertisement here. 
our prize chitpish, um, Matcham's Master Stroke. So this could possibly be the advertisement he's reading. Written by Mr. Philip Biofi, Playgirls Club London. This is the person that wrote this ad, it seems, this advertisement. Payment at the rate of one guinea a column has been made to the writer. So this is what this writer gets paid. Three and a half, three pounds three, three pounds thirteen and six. This is the payment this person, this Mr. Philip Beaufort has received for putting in this ad or something along them lines. Uh, quietly he read, no, so he's reading, quietly he read, uh, restraining himself. Um, this is refers to the business he's doing. The first column, so he read the first column and yielding but resisting and yielding but resisting was referring to the business he's doing began the second began to read the second column midway midway through reading mid uh, oh yes let me read that again. Oh, actually read the whole paragraph right through quietly he read restraining himself the first column and yielding but resisting began the second midway his less resistance Yielding, he allowed his bowl, bowels to ease themselves quietly as he read. Reading still patiently, that slight constipation of yesterday quite gone. Hope it's not too big, bring on piles again. No, just right. So a uh, castive, one tabloid of, one tabloid of cascara sagrada, life m- might be so. It did not move or touch him, but it was something quick and neat. Print anything now. Silly season. He read on. Seated cam above his own rising smell. Neat, certainly. Matcham often thinks of the master stroke by which he won the laughing which, who now, begins and ends morally, hand in hand smart. So just read no over that again. Um, do, 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 okay. Quietly he read. So he's reading this, you know, this these advertisements on this in this newspaper. Quietly re- restraining himself. This that refers to his business he's doing. The first column. Um, he's read the first column and yielding but resisting. Yielding but resisting. This refers to the business he's doing. Began the second. Began to read the second column. Midway through reading the second column, his last resistance yielding. This is referring to what he, he, the business he's doing. He allowed his bow- bowels to ease themselves quietly as he read. Um, reading still patiently, that slight constipation of yesterday quite gone. Then he thinks, hope it's not too big, bring on piles again. And then he, he must have looked at what he at his business, no, just right. So, a uh, castive, one tablet, tabloid of Cascara Sagrada. Oh, I should have a look at something here. Uh, Costi refers to uh, yeah, constipation, suffering, suffering from constipation. Uh, Cascara Sagrada. Uh, it's something that's used as a laxative. It's the bark of a cascara. Cascara Sagrada. The bark of the cascara used. It's used as a laxative. So a uh, cas Castive, one tablet of cascara sagrada. Light might be so. Uh, m- life might be so. Like referring to uh, something there. It did not move or touch him, but it was something quick and neat. <laughs> <laughs> so this is referring to the business he's doing. It did not move or touch him, but it was something quick and neat. And then he thinks, print, print anything now. He, now he, he's thinking about, um, he's still thinking about this uh, advertisement he's reading. Uh, print, that print anything now. Silly, it's silly season. This season, uh, uh, you know, of the year, they'll print anything. He read on, he read on, seated came above his own rising smell. <laughs> I mean, Jace is, is just too visual with that. Uh, he ran on, seated, came above his own writing smell. Neat, certainly. This re- is referring to the business he was doing. 
now is this now the next line and a half here is actually um it's actually in italics so this is this is, is i think the direct words he's reading matcham often thinks of the master stroke by which he won the laughing which who now <coughs> excuse me um so that's a number of direct lines i would say that he's he's reading from the newspaper begin begins and ends morally hand in hand smart he glanced back through what he had read and while feeling his water flow qu quietly um just one second <coughs> um uh, joy certainly leaves nothing out in his writing um uh, to do where is he in? okay uh he glanced back through what he had read and while feeling his water flow quietly he envied kindly mr Biofio Bofoy, who had written it and received payment of three pounds thirteen and six just going over that again he glanced back through what he read you know just this, this uh, advertisement uh and while feeling his water <laughs> flow quickly <laughs> he envied kindly mr Biofio, who had written it and received payment of t because he sells advertisements too it looks like for newspapers and he envied him you know because the payment he got obviously and received payment of three pounds thirteen and six my next line might manage a sketch by mr and mrs l m bloom invent a story for some pr proverb which time i used to try jotting down on my cuff what she was saying dressing dislike dressing together nicked myself shaving biting her nether lip hooking the the plasket of her shirt timing her 915 did robbers pay you yet 920 what did greta conway what had greta conway on 923 what possessed me to buy this comb 924 i'm swelled after that cabbage a speck of dust on the patent letter le leather of her boot um go back over that again might manage a sketch uh he's thinking about his own advertisement uh job i would say by mr and mrs l m bloom Invi and then he's thinking i'll invent a story you know um invent a story for some proverb which um he's thinking all this now i'll invent some story and he, he to get his name out there possibly invent a story for some proverb which time i used to try jotting down my cuff what she was what she said dressing so now he starts thinking yeah uh you start thinking about the time i used to try jotting down on my cuff on on my cuff the cuff of his sleeve what she said dressing when she used to be dressing when she'd be dressing uh, in the past his wife molly bloom he used to time i used to try jotting down on my cuff what she would she would be saying um Di and then he thinks dislike dressing together he dislikes dressing together with molly bloom you know nicked myself shaving then he's thinking yeah one time i nicked myself shaving biting her nether lip yeah probably possibly thinking about her she but bit her lip hooked the plasket of her sh of her skirt so he was hooked the plasket of her, s of her shirt of her skirt sorry uh this happened to probably timing her and, uh, and uh once upon a time he w he timed her it was nine fifteen and he's taken her he's he's imitating what she said did robbers pay you yet nine twenty what had greta conway on she's uh molly bloom is asking him all this you know in the past nine twenty three what possessed me to buy this comb this is molly Bl now he's imitating her um molly bloom said at one stage she what possessed me to buy this comb nine twenty four and she uh, this molly bloom uh has said this too in the past i'm swelled after that cabbage a speck of dust on the patent leather of her boot um so he's just thinking about in the past you know uh, occurrences with his wife molly bloom next line rubbing smartly in turn each welt against her stocking calf morning after the bizarre dance when may's band played Ponciello's dance of the hours explain that morning explain that morning hours noon then evening coming on then night hours washing her teeth that was the first night her head dancing her fan sticks clicking 
is that Bylan well off? He has money. Not why I notice. Why I notice he had a good smell of his breath dancing. No use humming then. Allude to it. Strange kind of music that last night. The mirror was in shadow. She rubbed her hand glass briskly on her woolen vest against her full wagging bub. Peering into it, lines in her eyes, it wouldn't pan out somehow. So just go back over that again. Now, rubbing smartly in turn each welt against her stocking calf. Um, what does that mean? Rubbing smartly in turn each welt against her stocking calf. Um, she could, uh, wearing these boots, she could have, you know, got, you know, kind of little bruises or something. Maybe not bruises, but some kind of irritation. Rubbing smartly in turn each welt against her stocking calf. That might refer to that. Morning after the bizarre d- dance. When May's band, when May's band played Ponciello's Dance of the Hours, so a bizarre dance. Uh, that's like some kind of a something referring to Molly Bloom. She's a, some kind of a napper singer or something, and that's what that's referring to. May's band played Ponciello with the Dance of the Hours. Um, I'm not. I don't know anything about opera or uh, anything like that. So if I knew about Ponciello, is, is it ballet? whatever it is uh we we know what that's about Ex- and then he's thinking explain that morning hours and now he starts thinking this in his mind how can you explain that how can you explain morning hours noon hours then evening coming on then night hours uh washing her teeth he's thinking about molly bloom washing her teeth that was the first night of this you know music thing her head dancing now he's thinking about Molly Bloom's head dancing. Um, her, her fan sticks clicking. That's great imagery from Joyce there. Her fan sticks. Visualize the fan um, and the clicking. She's, you know, swatting herself. Or not swatting it, but um, using this, uh, her fan sticks clicking. Is that Bylan well off? This is referring to Blaze's Bylan, who is, uh, it looks like, is another singer in these concerts with Molly Bloom. Is that Bylan well off? Is he rich? He has money, he is what he thinks. Why? Why why how do I know that kind of? I noticed he had a good smell of his breath dancing when he was dancing. Um no use humming then. No use humming then. Um, um referring to the thing and probably allude to it. Strange kind of music that last night. So this concert must have happened last night that he's thinking about here strange kind of music that last night the mirror was in shadow the mirror was in shadow why was the mirror in shadow um the mirror was in shadow there could be a mirror on the stage or something and it was in shadow that could refer to that she rubbed her hand glass bristly on her woolen vest against her full wagging bub so she could possibly be on the stage or something and this is what she done or handless you know handless would uh that could refer to that i would say possibly peering into it peering into it peering into it peering lines in her eyes it wouldn't pan out somehow referring to the lines i would say um next line which i'm actually turning the page here now evening hours girls and grey gorge night hours thin black with daggers and eye mess <laughs> po- poetical idea pink thin golden thin grey thin black still true to life also day day then the night he tore away half the prize story sharply and wiped himself with it then he girded up his trousers braced and buttoned himself he pulled back the jerky shaky door of the GX, jacks and came forth from the gloom into the air in the bright light in the bright light lightened and cool in limb he eyed carefully his black trousers the ends the knees the hose of the knees what time is the funeral better find out in the paper a creak and a dark whirr in the air high up the bells of george's church they tolled the hour loud dark iron hi ho hi ho hi ho hi ho quarter two then again the over Tones followed through the year, a third poor dignum. So 
Uh, just one second. I want to check something here now. A minute. I told you this. Uh, this recording is raw and an uncut. Is that what they say? Singer say uh, something along them lines. I want to check a word. Okay. I need to. Oh, fabric. Okay. Um, I'm back over that again there now. Uh, to do. Hoo -hoo. Okay, so now he's thinking about this evening hours. So this is could be an opera where they have evening hours or you know day hours or something along them lines. So he think, starts thinking all this evening hours, girls and grey gauge, girls and grey gauge. Um, any girls out there can tell me what gauge is. <laughs> uh, very thin, transparent fabric made in a plain weave. A sanguine dressing of loosely woven cotton. It's something got to do with makeup, I would say. Um, should ask my wife that. Uh, um, do do here we all. Uh, yeah, girls in grey gauze, night hours thin black. Now he's thinking about um, night hours thin black with daggers and eye masks. You can just visualize, uh, you know, women with daggers and eye masks. Um, Poetical idea pink. Now he starts singing. Put it's a poetical idea pink, then golden, then grey, then black. Still true to life. Also day, then the night. Now that's great, right? I'm just there again. If you think about it. Poetical idea pink. Visualize the mor. He's also referring to this. Like visualize the morning. Pink sky, then golden. The sun comes up, then grey, e towards evening, then black night. Still true to life. Also. Um, referring to you know this uh, whole dress of 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 the, of the people here, but also he's saying isn't it very true to life? Also, still true to life. Also, day then the night. Um, great writing, Jais again there. Now he tore away half the prize story sharply and wiped himself <laughs> and wiped himself with it. So the story is reading, he, you know, he done something with it. Then he girded up his trousers, braced and buttoned himself. He pulled back the jerky, shaky door of the jacks and came forth from the gloom into the air. Now that's a great image, guys. You can, just, you can nearly see him coming out there into the fresh air. And the bright light lightened and, and cooled in limb. Um, I told you, Jace was a fantastic writer. And, you know, it's... In the bright light, he really paints the picture here. In the bright light, lightened and cool and limb, he eyed carefully his black trousers. So he's looking down his black trousers, the ends, the knees, the holes of the knees. Rem remember, he didn't want to get them dirty for this funeral. What time is the funeral? Better find out in the paper, because the funeral will be listed in the paper. A creak and a dark whir in the air high up. That's great, I even just there. The bells of George's church. So he hears the bells ringing. The tall, the hour loud dark iron hi ho hi ho hi ho hi ho not hi ho silver but <laughs> hi ho quarter two um probably referring to the time there of course yeah it is of course then again the overtones followed through following through the year probably the bells a third poor dignum this is the person that uh, that has died and the funeral he is he is going to go to later on next line <coughs> By lorries along St. Sir John Rogerson's Quay, Mr. Bloom walked soberly past Windmill Lane, least the linseed crushers, the postal telegraph office could have given that address to, and past the sailor's home. He turned from the morning noises of the quayside and walked through Lime Street. By Brady's cottages, a by from the skins lolled, his bucket of offal linked. Smoking a chewed fag butt, a smaller girl with scares of eczema on her forehead eyed him listlessly, holding her battered ca cask hoop. Tell him if he smokes he won't grow, or let him. His life is in such a bed of roses, waiting outside pubs to bring day home. Come home to me, de slack hour. Won't be many there. He crossed Townsend Street past the frowning face of Bethel. L, yes, House of Alpha, Bet, and past Nichols, the Undertakers. At eleven it is. Time enough, dare say Corny Kelleher begged that job for O'Neill's. Singing with his eyes shut, Corny met her once in the park, in the dark, 
what a lark. Police tout her name and address. She then told with my Turalum, Turalum, Tay, or surely he begged it, bury him cheap in a what you may call, with my Turalum, 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 Turalum. Um, just one second now. <coughs> Still have the lingering cold. Um, um, so here we are again back now. Um, so um, I forgot to actually say at the start this recording again that you know as I you know I always say it's a good idea if people read ahead at least six pages before listening to this recording. Um, my my whole idea behind that is that you know eventually people you know won't need to listen <laughs> to my recordings. <laughs> And uh, now I'm not saying uh, you know that you will learn anything from my recordings, but it will be getting your mind into uh, you be getting your mind and and your visual intelligence working, you know, on its own, um, so to speak. Um, so you know, w when you listen to my recordings, then you say, okay, um, you know. Uh, you know what I'm kind of getting at. It's it, it's it'd be a lot more beneficial to any any listener if they read ahead first and figure out for themselves. And if I can if, if I can add some things to it, great, you know. Um, but just listening on to the recordings uh, and holding the book in your hand, and you know, kind of you know, uh, <laughs> yeah, really, it's b it's better if you can kind of figure it out for yourself because then, as I said before, the imagery really becomes alive and it comes, you know, really clear in your mind. And uh, that's the whole idea. Joyce, you know, spent seven years writing these books. Was um, yeah, the way you know people read or you know readers could you know, visualize and um, probably what I'm trying to say is uh, Joyce will take your mind to Dublin, you know, uh, to Dublin and, you know, to the streets of where we're reading now, y your mind will be taken there exactly, you know, like uh, watching television. If you, um, if you know what's going on and if you're reading and you're, you will, you, you will be transferred there basically. And there's no doubt about that. So going back in, uh, by lorries along St. John Rogerson's Key, by lorries, so Mr. Bloom walked soberly. So Mr. Bloom was walking along the street. He's walking along Sir John Rogerson's Quay by lorries. There's lorries part on the side of the road, I would say. No, past Windmill Lane, which pass, he goes past Windmill Lane, leaves the linseed crusher. He passes this shop, um, the postal telegraph office. He passes that. Could have given that address too. Now, why does he say? Uh, why does he think here? Could have given that address too. So, if I was to guess here now, I would say the reason he's thinking that is because he's possibly going to a, a postal telegraph office, anyways. And when he passes this postal telegraph office, he's thinking, I could have given that address too. You know, and picked up his telegraph there or letter or whatever I w that's what I would say and passed the sailor's home he passes the sailor's home he turned from the morning noises of the quayside um, and walked through Lime Street um, by Brady's cottages by Brady's cottages he's passing he's walking by Brady's cottages a buy from the skins lulled a buy from the skins I would say uh, uh, to do to do 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 and buy from the skins I would say um probably you know poorish poorish um by various kinds there would be probably you know poorish poorish uh um not a very well off kid I would say by various colours a buy from the skins lolled his bucket of offal linked so he's carrying a bucket of offal He's smoking, smoking a chewed fag, fag butt. This is a boy. A smaller girl with scares of enzyme on her forehead eyed him. So the young girl there. I said these are, you know, poorer people. Uh, listlessly holding her battered cast hoop. Now that's important there, cast hoop. Uh, now visualize um, like a hula hoop, a hula hoop, a round hula hoop. Uh, uh, what she is using there is a cast hoop. 
um like a barrel visualize a wooden barrel and the two rings that would be around two rings or three rings around that barrel you know this uh, like a silver or not uh, like uh, made of the two uh metal t uh, cast tubes you know around this wooden barrel she's using that as 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 a hula hoop kind of cask hoop see the exactness of joyce writing there T and then he thinks this tell him if he smokes he won't grow so sh he thinks this you know and he's more thinking uh should he tell the girl well, tell if tell him tell that young fella if he smokes he won't grow the cigarette the cigarette but and then he thinks oh let him oh let him you know i don't really care and then he thinks his life is in such a bed of roses this kid's he's thinking his this kid's uh, uh life is, n is not a bed of roses waiting outside waiting outside pubs to bring their home this is this is the life of this kid he probably have to wait outside pubs to bring his day home who's probably an alcoholic uh come home to me and he's thinking this come home to me day this is what the kid would say slack hour won't be many there slack hour now he starts thinking slack hour so he's going somewhere and if i was to guess i'd say he's going to a telegraph office or something slack hour and he's thinking yes yeah, uh, there won't be many there at this time slack hour won't be many there he crossed Townsend Street past the frowning face of Bethel, which I would say is possibly a statue. Uh, it could be a stone statue or something. He crossed Townsend Street past the frowning face of Bethel. Uh, could be a statue or could be a clock or something along them lines. L. Yes, House of Alphabet. Um, uh, that could refer to that too. Bet and past Nicol Nicholas the Undertakers. Hey, no, you, so now he's, he's walked past an Undertakers. At 11 it is. Now, at 11 it is. This is the funeral he's going to today. And he thinks, at 11 it is. The funeral is at 11. Time enough. He has plenty of time. Dare say Corny Kelleher begged that job for O'Neill's. So now he's thinking... He's thinking, dare say, Corny Keller, who was an individual he knows, begged that job for O'Neill's. Some kind of a job this Corny Keller begged, got for O'Neill's, which this Corny Keller could be a fellow kind of uh, person that sells advertisement to newspapers, I would think here. Dare say, Corny Keller begged that job for O'Neill's. So, this advertising job for O'Neill's, this Corny Keller begged it. This is what he's thinking. Sing, and then he starts thinking singing with his eyes shut so he starts he's still thinking this corny killer he sings when he sings he he closes his eyes singing with his eyes shut corny and met her once in the park in the dark what a lark so now he starts thinking met her once in the park so he met some met her he met some woman met her once he met some woman once in the park in the dark met her once in the park in the dark um uh, possibly molly bloom he met her once in the, he's thinking back he met her once in the park in the dark what a lark i see portrait from joy's here now met her once in the park in the dark what a lark police tout so a police person probably seen them or something her name and address she then told her name and address she then told with my turalum turalum te or surely he begged it her name and address she then saw this could refer to molly bloom giving her name and address to him uh, at that encounter or something she then told with my tour alum tour alum too or oh, surely he begged it now he starts thinking back to corny keller or oh, surely or oh, surely yes he got that job bury him cheap bury him cheap in a whatchamacall bury him cheap in a whatchamacall this now i he could be thinking here about uh dignam uh, the person is going to be uh, funerals today. Bury him cheap in a what you may call. Uh, now what you may call. That's what. Why are you may call. That's four words all joined together. We came across that before. Bury him cheap in a what you may call. With my turalum, 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 turalum. Now the words there is reciting are you know are words from you know a famous song here in Ireland. The turalum. I don't know the name of the song, but that's. He's re that's what he's uh, reciting there. In Westland Row, he halted before the window of the Belfast and Oriental Tea Company and read the legends of lead papered packets, choice blend, finest quality, 
family tea, rather warm tea must get some rather warm tea must get some from Tom Kiernan couldn't ask him at the funeral though while his eyes still read blandly he took off his hat quietly inhaling his hair oil and sent his right hand with slow grace over his brow and hair very warm morning under their cropped lids his eyes found the tiny bow of the leather headband inside his high grade hair just there his right hand came down into the bowl of his hat his finger found quickly a card behind the headband and transferred it to his waistcoat pocket so i've gone over that again um in westland row he halted before the window of the bel of the belfast and oriental tea company so he halted before a window of this tea company and read the legends of lead papered packets the legends of lead papered packets so on these packets of tea he's reading the legends that I would refer to, you know, the writing on these uh, packets. Chice blend, you know, tea, finest quality, family tea, rather warm tea, must get some. And now he s starts thinking, must get must get some tea from Tom Kiernan. So this Tom Kiernan must sell tea somehow. Couldn't ask him at the funeral. So now he's thinking, I can't ask him at the funeral. So this Tom Kiernan must be gone this funeral so he couldn't he's not going to ask him at the funeral wouldn't be right though while his eyes still read blandly he took now he's still reading the this this what he sees while his eyes still read blandly he took off his hat quietly he took off his hat quietly inhaling his hair oil so he took off his hat yeah he took off his hat quietly inhaling his hair oil and sent his right hand with slow grace over his brow and hair so that's great imagery from Joyce there again very warm morning let me read that again while his eyes still red bland blandly he took off his hat qu he took off his hat quietly in here so that's great writing from Joyce there so he took off his hat and he probably smelt the inside of his hat while his eyes still red bland he took off his hat quietly inhaling his hair oil so he obviously smelt the inside of his hat Inhaling his hair oil and sent his right hand with slow grace over his brow and hair. You can visualize that very clear. Very warm morning. So it's a warm morning. Under their dropped lids, his, his eyelids, his eyes found the tiny bow, the f tiny bow of the leather headband inside his high grade hair. So now he's looking inside his hat and he finds this leather headband, you know, the little band inside this hat, inside the high grade hair, which is the, you know, the 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 make of the hat you know the little plastic thing you would see inside the hat probably which we came across this before just there so he's looking for, he's looking for something his right hand came down into the bowl of his hat into the bowl of his hat great imagery from Joyce. his fingers found quickly a card behind the headband and transferred it to his waistcoat pocket so he's, he had a little card stuck in this uh inside his hat basically his fingers found quickly a card behind the headband and transferred it to his waistcoat pocket uh very great great image from joyce there so next line so warm his right hand once more move m uh, sorry so warm his right hand once more more slowly went over again chice blend made of the finest ceylon brands the fairies lovely spotted must be the garden of the world, big lazy leaf to float about on cactuses, flowery meads, snaky alenas, they call them. Wonder is it like that? Those sinhelas loving around in the sun in Jalcha Fair Nitya, <laughs> not doing a hands turn all day. Sleek so sleep sick months out of twelve. Too hot to quarrel, influence of the climate, lethargy. Flowers of idleness, the air feeds most. Acetus, hothouse and botanical, botanic gardens, sensitive plants, water lilies, petal to, petals too tired to, sleeping sickness in the air, walk on rose, rose leaves, imagine trying to eat tripe and cow heel. Where was that chap I saw in that picture so, somewhere? Uh, so I'll just read over that again. I just want to look at something here now. Here, a climbing plant or vine. Okay. 
Um, where were we? Tal, tal. A finger is found. Okay. His right hand came down into the ball of his head. His finger is found quickly occurred behind the headband and transferred to the waist coat pocket. So warm. So this is a warm day. His right hand once more, his right hand once more, more slowly went over again. Chai splint. Uh, so he's reading these uh, things. Uh, made of the finest Ceylon leaves. Uh, or to the tea. The fairies. So he starts thinking about the fairies. Lovely spot it must be. The fairies must be a lovely spot. The garden of the world. Big lazy leaves to float about on. So he's thinking about the fairies. There's big lazy leaves, leaves to float about on. And the sea probably. Cactuses, flowery meads, snaky uh, lineas they call them. Wonder is it like that? Now we start thinking, is it like that at all? Those sinnelas, whatever they are, uh, sinnelas. Uh, did I look up that word? Do, 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 do. I didn't actually. But um, sinnelas, to do, are we at all? Those sinnelas lobbing around in the sun. Sinhalas lobbing around in the sun. I'm not sure what they are. I'm going to check that out. In Dolce Fernita, not doing a hen's turn all day, so they could refer to some kind of. Um, if I knew what that is, I know I could be able to understand the rest of it. Those things lobbing around the sun in Dolce and Avi, so he's still thinking about the fairies, not doing a hen's turn all day, not doing a hen's turn. That basically means not doing any work at all all day. Sleep six months out of twelve. Um, well, that probably would lobbing around the sun. If I have to just guess here now, and I could be wrong, Sin Sing Hellas lobbing around in the sun. That could be a hat, possibly. Um, and it could be referring to, you know, the, in the fairies, they have siestas during the day and so on. Uh, it could possibly be what he's thinking there. Those are slobbing around the sun in Dolce Fernia. Not doing any hands turn all day. Um, but no, it's not a hat either. But something, he's thinking about siestas, I would say, somehow there. Um, are these could be people that, uh, that uh, in boats, where, you know, they bring people, you know, uh, on boats. And, you know, you visualize the big oar at the back and they're steering these. Um, could be boats along, you know, on, in, uh, on the rivers. And this is what he's thinking about. And not doing a hand's turn all day. Sleep six months out of twelve. You know the siestas. I think he's thinking about there. Too hot to quarrel. In the climate there, be too hot to quarrel. Influence of the climate. L let's hardly see flowers of idleness. Um, I should have looked up this word because if I knew what this word is, I, 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 I'd be able to understand the lines following it. Uh, now these could refer to plants, thinalesas too. Um, which it l it's looking like there could be plants too. <laughs> I don't know. I'll have to f look at that. But you know, the listeners can get the idea of what I'm talking about. Um, flowers of idleness. The air feeds most. Now, I was thinking about in general, the air feeds most. Uh, acetus. Uh, I didn't do much research before this sitting. I don't know what acetus is at all if I did. But um, I'll go back and do this again. And now he's thinking hot house and botanic botanic gardens. Now the botanic gardens in Dublin are, you know, they're basically gardens for the all kinds of plants and trees and flowers and so on. Uh, very world famous actually. And this it must be a hot house in the hot house, glass house probably, in botanic gardens. Sensitive plants, water lilies. Now he's thinking about water lilies. Water lilies in general are sensitive plants. Why does he call them sensitive plants? Um, if I was to guess just right here and now, uh, as I'm thinking, sensitive, why are water lilies sensitive plants? Because the water which kind of shakes them and it it's like they're nervous. Uh, that's, you could be thinking about that. Petal too, ti too tired to. Sleeping sickness in the air. This is what he's thinking all this now. Walk on rose leaves. Yes, you could walk on rose leaves. Imagine trying. And then he thinks, he thinks. Imagine trying to eat tripe and cow heel <laughs> while on the river or something. Uh, and then he, where was that chap I saw on that picture somewhere? Uh, where was that chap I saw on that picture somewhere? So, 
Um, I gotta look at something here now. Do uh, do 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 do. Where was the chap I saw? Um, okay. Where was that? Okay, let me re I'm going to read the whole paragraph here now again. Where was that chap I saw in that picture somewhere? A eh, in the Dead Sea, floating on his back, reading a book with a parasol open. Couldn't sink if if you tried. So thick with salt because of the because the weight of the water. No, the weight of the body in the water is equal to the weight of the. Or is it the volume is equal to the weight? It's the law of something like that. Vents in. High school cracking his finger giants teaching the college curriculum cracking cracking curriculum what is weight really when you say the weight thirty two feet per second per second law of falling bodies per second per second they all fall to the ground the earth is the force of gravity of the earth is the weight so I'll go back reading that again now if the listeners remember back to when he was reading the newspaper in the butcher shop the uh, the toured newspaper and he started thinking at one stage about the Dead Sea um, now I remember there was one or two lines and I was we I kind of couldn't uh, why was he thinking about the Dead Sea and it looks like now I'm not sure about this but it looks like this could be the answer here which Joyce has only given us now like seven or eight pages later because he thinks here where was that chap where was the chap I saw in that picture somewhere? So this, he's thinking back to when he was in the butcher shop. Where was the chap I saw in that picture somewhere? So he's seen it. Remember we, uh, I said that he must be looking at a picture or something, uh, or reading something about the Dead Sea in that, uh, co that piece of newspaper from the butcher shop. And that's what sparked all the thoughts about the Dead Sea and so on. And now we, uh, this uh, I'm not sure about this now. I'll have to I'll have to read back that section, but you know, as I'm recording here now, I'm not going to do it because it would take too much time to find it. Where and then he thinks, where was that? Where was the chap I saw in that picture somewhere? Eh, in the Dead Sea. So this is what he could be referring to now. So he must at that time when he was looking in that uh, newspaper, he seen he seen a picture of a chap. A in the Dead Sea, floating on his back, reading a book with a parasol open. Couldn't sink if you tried. So he's, this is the picture. He's, he's seen this picture of this person in that uh, newspaper at that time. And you know, Joyce didn't make it clear at the time, but now he's making he's making it clear. Where was that chap I saw in that picture somewhere? A in the Dead Sea, floating on his back, reading a book with a parasol open. This is what he saw. Couldn't sink if you tried. So th you know he's thinking about the Dead Sea again. Couldn't sink if you tried. It's so thick with salt. Now he's thinking again because the weight of the water. This is what he's thinking in his mind. Because the w this is why you can't sink because the weight of the water. And then he's no. It's the weight of the body in the water is equal to the weight of the. And then he thinks, or is it the volume is equal to the weight? It's the law, something like that. You know, this, this is all he's taught. Vents in. Vents now is obviously a person. So he starts thinking about Vents in high school cracking his finger giants teaching. Um, he's, so that must be it must be a teacher in the high school he went to. Vents in high school. So this his thoughts have gone in a completely different direction. Vents in high school, which is pop, which I'd say is a teacher. Vents in high school cracking his finger giants teaching while he was teaching so a teacher used to do this and then he starts thinking the college curriculum crack cracking curriculum <laughs> cracking curriculum and then he's thinking what oh, let me read what oh yeah what is weight really when you say the weight he's thinking about weight well, what is weight really when you say the weight 32 feet per second per second law of falling bodies per second per second they all fall to the ground the earth it's the force of gravity of the earth is the weight now he's just thinking all this in his mind next line he turned away and sauntered across the road how did she walk with her sausages <laughs> like that something as he walked he took the folded freeman from his side pocket unfolded it rolled it lengthwise in a baton and tapped it at every sauntering step against his trouser leg careless air just drop in to see per second per second per second for every second it means 
From the curbstone, curb stone, he darted a keen glance through the door of the post office. Too late, box post here, no one in. He handed the car through the brass grill. Are there any letters for me? He asked. Uh, let's read over that again. So he turned away and sauntered across the road. So now you can you can clearly clearly visualize him crossing the road there. He turned away and sauntered across the road. How did she walk with her sausages? Now he starts thinking back to uh, in th- when he was in the butcher shop and the lady that was in the butcher shop with him, and he starts thinking, how did she walk with her sausages? That's what he's thinking now. Uh, like that, like that something, like that something. How did she walk with her sausages? Like that something. Um, there's some kind of a sexual reference from Jai's here with the sausages, I know. As he walked, he took the folded Freeman, which is in the newspaper he has, from 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 his side pocket, unfolded it, so he unfolded his newspaper, rolled it lengthwise in a batten, and tapped it at every sauntering step against his trouser leg. So you can visualize that clearly. He took out this newspaper, he rolled it up like a batten, and as he's walking, he's just tapping his, he's tapping his, um, he's tapping his leg, you know, uh, but the exactness of that writing is just great, you know. Careless air, careless air, just drop in to see, per second, per second, he's just thinking all this, per second, for every second it means, he's still thinking, this is thoughts and he's coming to his mind. From the curb stone, he darted a keen glance toward the door. So now Joyce, is the writer, has come back in here again. From the curbstone, he darted, Leopold Bloom darted a keen glance through the door of the post office. So yes, he was going to a post office. Uh, too late, box, post here. No one in. So he must be looking at these things here. Too late, box, post here. These are things he sees probably. No one in. No one, no one inside. This is what he, yeah, that could refer to no one inside. Yeah, there's no one in here, no. And then he asks, are there any letters for me? Yes. So he asked somebody, are there any, any letters for me? Next line, while the postmistress searched a pigeonhole, he gazed at the recruiting poster with soldiers of all arms on parade and held the tip of his baton against his nostrils, smelling, smelling fresh printed rag paper. No answer probably went too far last time. The postmistress mistress handed him back through the grill his car with a letter. He thanked and glanced rapidly at the typed envelope. Henry Flower, Esquire, CO, PO, Westland, Row, City. Um, let's read that again now because I've just turned the page here. Right, where were we? Tall, tall, tall. He handed the car through the brass grill. Oh, yeah, are there any letters for me? Yes. So he's asked this person in the post office this. While the postmistress searched a pigeonhole. Uh, that's great right from Joyce again. He gazed at the recruiting poster with soldiers in arms on parade. So this this poster be in this po- in this post office. Uh, he gazed at the recruiting poster with soldiers of all arms on parade. This is the poster he sees. And held the tip and held the tip of his baton, the newspaper, against his nostrils. Smelling fresh printed rag paper. So this is what he smells from the newspaper. No answer probably. Went too far last time. No answer probably. Went too far last time. Um, not sure about that now yet. No answer probably. Went too far last time. The postmistress handed him back through the grill his card with a letter. He thanked and glanced rapidly at the typed envelope. Henry Flower Esquire. C.O. P.O. Westland Road City. No answer probably. So, um, no answer probably went too far last time. So, that could refer to whoever is, he's expecting a letter from somebody and he's thinking no answer, no, I didn't get an answer yet from that person. Went too far last time. So, he went too far, he said something that he shouldn't have said. Next line, answered anyhow. So, yes, this answered anyhow. So, the person did answer uh, that's why he got the letter. i read the paragraph. Answered anyhow. He slipped card and letter into I- into his side pocket, reviewing again the soldiers on parade. Where's old Tweedy's regiment? Cast off soldier. Three. Uh, there. Bearskin cap and hackle plume. No, he's a, a grenadier. 
pointed cuffs. There he is, Royal Dublin Fusiliers, red coats, too showy. That bus, that must be why the women go after them. Uniforms easier to enlist and drill. Maud Gon's letter about taking them off O'Connor Street at night, disgrace to our Irish capital. Griffith's paper is on the same tack now. An army rotten with venereal disease overseas, or half season, half half sea over empire. Half baked, they look hypnotized like eyes front, mark time, table, able, bed ed, the king's own. Never see him dressed up as a fireman or a bobby, a mason, yes. So reading over that again. Um answered anyhow, so yes, he's got an answer to the letter. He slipped card and letter into his side pocket, reviewing again the soldiers on parade, so he's looking at the um, advertisement uh of these you know, soldiers. Where, where's old Tweedy's regiment? So now he's thinking about Molly Bloom's father, Tweedy. And he's thinking, where's old Tweedy's regiment? And then he's thinking, Molly Bloom's father, the person he calls Tweedy, he's a cast-off soldier. Like he's an old, <laughs> like an old soldier. And then he, he's, where's old Tweedy's regiment? So there's obviously a, there's a, a, probably a lot of posters in here with different army you know, uh, regiments or what not. And then he said, which one is old Tweedy's regiment? Cast off soldier. There, what's oh, there? That, is that one there. That one to the left or whatever. There it is. Bear skin cap and heckle plume. This is their hat to wear. There, that's the regiment. He, he's with that branch. No, he's a grenadier. And then he says, no, no, he's, that's not his. No, he's a grenadier. Pointed cuffs. So he said, no, no, that's not, no, he's in a different regiment. Pint of cuffs, and there he is. So he looked at another kind of a another poster, and he said, "Oh no, there he is. That's uh, he's with that regiment over there. There he is, Royal Dublin Fusiliers, red coats, too showy. So the the way red coats, and then he's saying red coats, yeah, they're too showy. That must be why the women go after them. This is what he's thinking. This is why the women go after them because of the red coats. <laughs> Uniform, uniforms. This is what he's thinking. Uh, Easier to enlist and drill. Uh, he's thinking all this. Maulgon's letter about taking them off O'Connor Street at night, disgrace to our Irish capital. Now, Maulgon was a very powerful uh, lady in Irish history. She was also. W. Yeats uh, was trying to get married to Maulgon for years. I think she refused him. Um, but Maulgon was a highly, uh, highly, th- you know, very uh, popular woman in them times. And so she. She must have wrote letters, so she must have wrote a letter to a newspaper saying, you know, uh, to take these. Sh- so Maud Gon's letter about taking them off, taking soldiers off O'Connor Street at night is a disgrace to our Irish capital. So Maud Gon was probably, um, she didn't want the soldiers on the uh, capital. She probably didn't want the English in Ireland, I would say, if I was to guess there. Griffith's paper is of the same tech now. Griffith's, p- so we came across Arthur Griffith before, so it looks like Arthur Griffith has founded a newspaper with a few other people possibly griffith's paper is on the same tack now the same way of thinking an army rotten with venereal disease this is what griffith could have possibly wrote it's the name the uh, the english army referring to here um who ruled ireland uh the england ruled ireland at this time and you know and it's uh, an army rotten with venereal de- disease overseas or half sea over empire. So Arthur Griffith possibly referred to them like that in an article. And then he starts thinking again, half, he's looking at these soldiers and these posters be, uh, on the wall of the post office. Half baked they look, they look half baked, Ho- hypnotized, they look like they're hypnotized. Eyes front, mark time. And he's thinking all this now. Table able, so he just thinks table, and he just thinks a word that sounds like table. Table able, bed, ed, the king's own. These are just thoughts coming into his head. The king's own. Never see him dressed up as a fireman or a bobby. Now he's thinking about the uh, a king in general. You'd never see a king dressed up as a fireman or bobby. A mason, yes, you'd see him dressed up as a freemason, right? <laughs> That's what he's more or he's saying there. Next line, he stopped. He stro- strolled out of the post office and turned to the right. Talk as if the, as if that would mend matters. His hands went into his pocket, and a forefinger felt its way under the flap of the envelope, ripping it open in jerks. Women will pay a lot of heed. I don't think. 
His fingers drew forth the letter and crumpled it uh, and crumpled the envelope in his pocket, something pinned on photo perhaps here no Malkai, get rid of him quickly take me out of my way hate company when you um I just want to check something here now okay i just want to finish this page and i'm just going to stop this section um so okay where are we at all okay so i have baked the look he's looking at these posters and they look hypnotized i just found okay we, oh yeah he strolled out of the post office and turned to the right. Talk as if that would mend matters. So now he's thinking about these articles in the newspapers, you know, from Maud Gone and from Griffith. All this talk as if it's going to make any difference, more or less. His hand went into his pocket, so he and a forefinger felt its way under the flap of the envelope. You see the preciseness of Joyce's writing here now. Um, again. So he, the envelope... Or, or the letter is in his pocket, his hand in his pocket and a forefinger felt its way under the flap of the envelope. So visualized his finger going under the flap of the envelope, ripping it open in jerks. So he ripped open this letter in his pocket with, with his finger. Women will pay a lot of heed. Now he starts thinking, women will pay a lot of heed to all these articles in the paper about, you know, about, you know, uh, trying to get a United Ireland and all this, I would say. This is what he's thinking. I don't think. His fingers drew forth the letter. His fingers drew forth the letter. So his finger. This is all happening inside his pocket now. His fingers drew forth the letter from the envelope and crumpled the envelope in his pocket. Um, the exactness of Joyce's writing there is just incredible. His fingers drew forth the letter and crumpled the envelope in his pocket. This is all happening in his pocket. Something pinned on. Footer perhaps here no. So now he's feeling the letter. And he's thinking something. There's something pinned on to this letter. Something pinned on. Is it a photo perhaps? Hair? Is it a piece of hair? No. He's feeling with his fingers. And he's wondering. What is this I can feel here? Next line. Mackay. Get rid of him quickly. Take me out of my way. Hate company when you. Mackay. So now he sees a person called Mackay coming towards him. Mackay. Get rid of him quickly. I must get rid of him. Take me out of my, he'll take me out of my, you know, stride, what I'm doing here with this letter. Hate company, I hate company when, you know, when I want, when I want to read this, read letters and so on, he's thinking. Next line. Hello, Bloom. Where are you off to? Hello, Mackay. Nowhere in particular. How's the body? Fine. How are you? Just keeping alive, Mackay said. His eyes on the black tie and clothes, he asked with low respect. Is there any... No trouble, I hope. I see you're... Oh no, Mr. Bloom said. Poor Dignam, you know, the funeral is today. To be sure, poor fellow. So it is. What time? A photo it isn't. A badge, maybe. Ere eleven, Mr. Bloom answered. I must try to get out there, Mackay said. Eleven, is it? I only heard it last night. Who was telling me? Houlihan. You know, Hoppy. I know. I should read over that again. So Mackay, so he spots this Mackay coming into this. Mackay, get rid of him quickly. Take me out of my stride when I'm doing here. Hate company. I hate company when, I, when I'm, you know, about to read a letter. So Mackay said, hello Bloom, where are you off to? Uh, next line. Bloom says, hello Mackay, nowhere in particular. So Mackay says, how's the body? How are you? How are things more or less? Uh, Mr. Bloom says, uh, Leopold Bloom says, fine, how are you? Just keeping alive, Mackay said. His eyes on the black tie and clothes, he asked with low respect. So Mackay looks at Leopold Bloom's black tie and clothes. He, he look, is there any? So he's wondering, why is he wearing black, basically? Is there any? Pause. No trouble, I hope. I see your... You see the exact exactness of Joyce's writing here. Um, is there any... Pause. No trouble, I hope. I see you're, you know, I see you're dressed in black. I hope nobody died or something. Next line. Oh, no, Mr. Bloom said. Uh, let me read that again. Is there any, so, Mackay is more saying, is there any, is anybody die belong to you, Miss, more or less? Next line. Oh, no, Mr. Bloom said. Poor Dignam, you know. So, this is the person that died, Dignam. The funeral is today. Next line. To be sure, poor fellow, so it is. What time? Uh, Mackay says. 
At four oh, it isn't a badge, maybe. So now Leo Bloom, as he's talking to Mackay, is still feeling in his pocket, and he's thinking, "Is it a photo?" He's he, he's feeling here. A photo, it isn't a badge. Maybe it's a badge. Um, next line, e- eleven, Mister Bloom answers. So eleven, the time of the funeral. I must try to get out there, Mackay said. Uh, eleven, is it? I. I only heard it last night. Who was telling me? Hulahan, you know Hoppy. I know. Um, so basically there now, uh, I must try to get out there, Mackay said, to the funeral. Eleven, is it? I only heard it last night. Who was telling me? Hulahan, you know Hoppy. I know. Um, so I just want to gonna come to that section now there. I'm going to stop uh, Stop here now. Uh, we'll see how much we got. One, two, three, four, five, and five and a bit as I say but um, I'm going to stop this section here now and um, um, I, I and I'd like to say adios uh, from Monavay here where I'm doing this recording and until next time <laughs>